In this video, we'll be showing an iris biopsy of a amelanotic lesion in the uh, inferior iris with an extension within the uh, ciliary body. Our uh, ocular oncologist uh, had sent this patient for a uh, tissue specimen to uh, confirm the, uh, the diagnosis, which was presumed to be uh, a melanoma. So she needed a uh, tissue uh, to uh, confirm this and uh, the ciliary body uh, could have been uh, biopsied, but this required a larger uh, incision, creating a scleral flap and, and a dissection that is a little bit more uh, tedious. Uh, and in this video, we'll be demonstrating a, a way to remove a peripheral iris uh, lesion to get a, a good amount of tissue for a um, pathology uh, examination. So we created two paracentesis incisions at the 3 and 9 o'clock uh, positions, uh, angling them towards the uh, area where we had this, uh, this lesion that is really uh, shown quite nicely here with the uh, Helon GV that was injected uh, in the uh, anterior chamber. It showed that it was really uh, adherent to the uh, peripheral angle and we used a, a pair of uh, micro-tying uh, MST forceps as well as a 23 gauge uh, uh, micro scissors uh, from uh, retina in order to excise a piece of this uh, iris tissue. And what was challenging here was the uh, orientation of this uh, uh, amelanotic lesion. It was a little bit uh, peripheral and uh, we were trying to spare as much of the healthy uh, iris tissue uh, and it was also stuck on to the uh, to the angle, so we had to use these uh, the curved edge of these uh, scissors to navigate through the anterior chamber and uh, allow to do as much of a biopsy uh, specimen as we could. And we're here, we're, we're really trying to uh, cut as much of that uh, tissue as possible, removing um, a strip basically. And uh, when we remove it here, we try to remove it as slowly as we can to not damage any of the cells that we want. Our pathologist to be able to analyze. So we have here the first piece and then we're going to add a little bit of uh, viscoelastic here in order to visualize um, what was left of the uh, of the tumor and we're seeing here the ciliary processes uh, as well as a, a direct view uh, mirror showing us the, uh, the remaining strip of tissue that was left so we see that we were able to take a large part of that peripheral iris but very little of the uh, iris tissue remaining in the, uh, the peripheral angle. And we're going to go grab uh, some extra tissue here because we found that there were a few areas that has the, those uh, small pigmented zones within it. So we wanted to have that also tissue analyzed at the same time. Um, we need to make sure that we have a good diagnosis here. And uh, again, uh, dissecting uh, on either side, the more posterior and the most anterior edge of this lesion and this is why we uh, placed ourselves at the head of the patient in order to get the best access to the uh, lesion. And we notice here that there is uh, some consistency to, to that uh, tumorous uh, material. Uh, we thought at first that it may be uh, slightly difficult to grasp, but uh, we were able to hold it quite nicely with this 23 gauge uh, micro forceps. And here we're exposing the, uh, the piece that we just excised, highlighting the gelatinous and amelanotic aspect of the lesion. Then we removed all of the viscoelastic manually as much as we can, uh, trying to keep the anterior chamber form, avoiding any uh, undue heme on the surface. Then we hydrate our incisions and make sure that it was a watertight seal. Thanks for tuning in.